These are 10 tips that every beginner skater should utilize and know before getting into the wonderful world and adventure and journey of skateboarding. I have a very, very special announcement, but I'm gonna wait till halfway through this video to tell you. The first tip is slow progress is fast progress. The turtle always beats the hare because in skateboarding, the hare always gets injured when trying things that they're not ready for. Everybody who gets into skateboarding wants to learn the ollie, then the kickflip, then the 360 flip. There are at least 50 tricks in between those tricks that you can learn first, and they prep you for the harder tricks in the future. So instead of learning an ollie, then a kickflip, you wanna learn how to 180, back 180, fakie ollie. You wanna get more comfortable with the skateboard, to shove it. You wanna do these tricks before moving on because it's likely you get injured if you jump straight into the more difficult trick that you're not prepared for. Tip number two, the basics are key, and there are three that you should be concerned about. Pushing, balance, and ollies. Make sure you do these as much as you can in the first week. Ride around everywhere, just push around. That'll help you with your balance, but also it'll help you with your pushing. And I know you wanna jump ahead and get to some of the tricks, so just work on the ollie. The better you have these three down, the easier every trick in the future is going to be. So the, these are the three principles of all tricks, of all of skateboarding. So the better you get these, the easier skateboarding is gonna be in the future. So just spend time and craft these. Put on some good music, put on a podcast, have some fun. Tip number three, the skateboard won't make you better. A lot of people get paralysis by analysis. They do all this research before actually gaining the experience. Any good pro skateboarder can do most things on any board. If you get a Walmart board, that's not gonna be great. That's gonna be hard for anyone. But if you get a board that can roll decently, basically a board that's $80 or more, it's not gonna be the board that prevents you from learning tricks. It's gonna be the time and effort you put into actually trying to learn the tricks. Number four is don't practice flat ground tricks in a skate park. This means don't practice them in front of obstacles or anywhere where there's any obstacles anywhere around you. So if there's a parking lot nearby or a cement patch somewhere over there, then yeah, that's totally fine. But you can find flat ground pretty much anywhere. The reason people go to skate parks is to try to utilize whatever obstacles they have there. So if you're practicing something that you can practice anywhere, people might get frustrated and that might actually turn you off if they say something to you. Number five is pretty straightforward, but go to skate parks early if you want to experiment with the skate park without having the anxiety or fear of somebody else at the park potentially running into you or you getting in the way. If you go really early, like right now, there is no one at this park at all. So I'm free to experiment and try whatever I want without any anxiety, without thinking that someone might creep up behind me and run into me. This is sort of my favorite time to skate a park as well because I can get in the zone. It's also a good time to go with your friends if you have any, unlike me. Just kidding. <laughs> and now for the last five, but this is where I was going to announce my special announcement. I have finally, after 10 years of YouTube, after making over 1600 videos talking about skateboarding and how to skateboard, after getting thousands of people into skateboarding, after teaching hundreds or maybe thousands of people how to skateboard, I am finally launching a skate course. Now these don't really exist in skateboarding, which is bizarre. There's no real way of progressing through skateboarding that people are used to seeing. You just get all these trick tips here and there, and then you kind of have to put the pieces together. So I finally made a course to where if anyone else there wants to grow faster than 99% of skateboarders do, because I'm actually giving direction, I have a new course that has 25 trick tips. So the first 25 tricks you can learn, each one leading to the next one, making it easier and easier and easier, with 10 bonus videos explaining things like how to fall properly, how to conquer your first day skateboarding, how to stay motivated to skate, how to post on social media, how to find friends to skate. There are all these extra videos. Plus we have a Discord as well, so I'll be in there every day answering questions, talking to people. It has been super fun actually engaging more with the audience through emails and things I've been working on. Now this is the, this is the main way that I'm really excited to engage with an audience, actually trying to learn, not just be an observer of the skate culture, but actually wanting to participate I do think that every person in their lives should go through the process of learning a kickflip because skateboarding is just getting more and more popular. You want to tell your kid, you want to tell your friend that you can kickflip, that you can ride around a little bit, you want to go cruise at the beach, cruise on the sidewalk, cruise at some university nearby. These are things that are fun for everybody. So I'm finally, finally having this course. I'm so excited about this. I've been working on it for over a year. So if you want to check it out, click the link in the description down below to sign up. This feels like what is my calling after after all this time on the platform. I'm really, really excited about this, so check it out. I'm gonna leave it at that. I will probably have more to say about it later on as I make videos. 
but I'm so, so pumped on this. Okay, let's get to the last five things every beginner skater should know. Number six is film your progress. Not only does this help you have an objective perspective of your skateboarding, but that skill and having an objective perspective on you is a great skill for every industry you move forward with in the future. If you wanna grow fast, you have to be honest with yourself and where you're slacking. So if you're trying an ollie and then you're watching somebody else do an ollie, find the difference, spot the difference, and you'll be able to adjust next time you get on a skateboard. Or you can film with your phone and immediately look at the phone and be like, oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. So film your progress and then you'll have it as you move forward and you get better, you can actually look back and be motivated by the progress you've made so far. This actually applies to anything in life, but in skateboarding, this is especially helpful. Number seven might sound strange coming from someone who might seem like a perfectionist, but don't focus too much on the technique. With a kickflip, you kind of want to stand comfortably and you want to do the thing you got to do, which is fold your foot and kick a certain part of the board. But if your foot is five degrees to the right of the other pro skateboarder, if you go to a skate park, every skateboarder has a different position a little bit compared to the other skaters. Nobody does it exact. Some people have their entire foot on the board. Some people don't have any part of their foot. Don't focus too much on where everything needs to be because it's gonna throw you off from doing what feels more intuitive. This kind of applies to any sport, really. Getting better is more about the time allotted to trying it. It's probably not the very specific technique that you're doing wrong. So focus on it a little bit, but not too much. Don't obsess. Number eight is an iteration of the last one, but no skate trick is a hack. You watch the video, you see what someone does, you can watch it in slow motion, and that's how you do the trick. For whatever reason, even if you know the technique perfectly logically, it doesn't really apply to the skateboard until you put in the practice. It is just like weightlifting in this weird way, where obviously the more weight you lift, the more weight you can end up lifting. Skateboarding works the same way. The kickflip just requires practice. If you want to kickflip better, you practice kickflips. If you want a manual farther, you practice balancing. Everything in skateboarding is a slow progression. Knowing the technique is never, never enough. So don't search for the hack too much because it really, really isn't there. Once you know how to do the trick technically, it's all about the time spent trying the trick. And number 10 is a five in one. These are just little hacks that might prevent you from looking bad, which I'll talk more about after I say them. But don't mall grab, don't push Mongo, don't ask if people are okay. That's a weird one, I'll explain. Don't ask, was that switch? And then don't, spell it wrong, don't wax things you can't skate. The thing with the mall grab and the Mongo, does it actually hurt you in any way in terms of progress? No, but I know people out there are concerned with what people think about them. The truth is if you walk into a skate park and you're a beginner and you're holding a mall grab, people will think that you just started. And even if you did, it just kind of has the vibe of someone who's new to skating. It's totally fine if you don't mind looking that way, but a lot of people are concerned about that, so I, I, I mentioned it. Mongo is the same thing. It doesn't actually hinder you really in any way. A lot of people push Mongo switch and do the hardest tricks ever. So Mongo doesn't hinder you, but people don't really do it. It's also another sign that you're a beginner. Don't ask if people are okay is a really strange one because in life, that's obviously, you should ask. You should ask everyone, but skateboarders, it's kind of normal to slam a lot. When you try a trick that causes you a lot of slams over and over and over and over, you don't wanna be asked every single time, are you okay, just because you're hitting the ground kind of hard. If you don't skate, it's kind of hard to tell what kind of slam hurts more. So once you get better at skating and it's a friend of yours and you see that the board pops up in a weird way and hits their shin that somebody else might not notice, then of course you can be, you good? Or if they seem like they may have broken something, then you know, you might be like, if you're not good, I can take you to the hospital, are you good? So you kind of have to find the balance with that, but if you're new to skating, don't just ask everyone who falls, are you okay? Don't ask, was that switch applies to anyone anywhere? Switch is a harder way to skate. It means you're skating backwards. So if somebody does a trick regular and you say, was that switch? and it wasn't switch, you're basically saying that their regular trick looked like they were doing it backwards, where it's more difficult and doesn't look as good. So you're kind of unintentionally insulting them by saying, oh, that looks switch, and they're gonna be like, oh, well it wasn't, that sucks. I wish it didn't look switch, I wish it looked regular like it was. And the last one, don't wax things. This one should be obvious, but if you wax something and you're not skating it, there's no reason for you to wax it at all and somebody else might come by and try to slide it and get hurt and that's completely your fault. This actually happens a decent amount, but when you wax something, you wanna make it really, really obvious. You also wanna be someone who is skating it and you wanna make sure that the vibe is cool about you waxing this obstacle. At skate parks, you can't just go around waxing things. It is a huge 
huge no-no, unless you're the only one here, which is what I love, but even with me, after skating for 23 years, I don't just wax things. I'll be like, hey, are you cool if I wax it to someone else who's skating the same obstacle I'm skating? If they say no, then that's that. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As you can tell, I'm uploading a shorts every single day and I'm uploading two videos a week right now. So if you wanna stay tuned, subscribe. Tune into any social media. Right now I'm posting on all of them because I've just been so, so inspired now that I have more time to skate. I realize it's the thing that I like to do. And obviously with this course that came out, I wanna do as much stuff as I can that sort of centers around that. So definitely check it out if you have been wanting to skate and you just haven't been wanting to learn how to skate, this is crucial. And for anyone else out there who may be more of an experienced skater I'll be uploading a lot of shorts and videos that might be more useful to you explaining how to do even more difficult tricks so tune in and thank you so much for being here it's been a long while while doing this and somehow I still have the energy and I still love I just love skateboarding it's really really fun and I figured out a way to implement it into my life where I can do a lot of other stuff get a lot of other stuff done while simultaneously doing this activity because it is really 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 good for the soul so thank you so much for watching stay tuned for the next video take care progress daily and Keep killing it.